Samoa consists of two main islands, Upolu and Savai, as well as seven small islands. The Samoan Islands comprise almost wholly of volcanic rocks with coral reefs forming in some coastal areas. The country has a total land area of 2,850 square kilometers, an EEZ of 120,000 square kilometers, and a total population of approximately 180,000. The country's capital, Apia, is located in the northwestern side of Upolu and is home to 52% of all Samoan residents. Agriculture employs two-thirds of the labor force and furnishes 90% of exports featuring coconut cream, coconut oil and copra. Outside of a large automotive wire harness factory, the manufacturing sector mainly processes agricultural products. Tourism is an expanding sector and is the second biggest revenue earner for Samoa. Samoan society is organized and based around village life, with the church also playing a major role. And hidden in this idyllic setting, various agencies are hard at work harnessing the power of renewable energy. Renewable energy, clean, green energy. Energy generated from natural resources such as sunlight, wind, rain, tides and geothermal. As the cost of oil prices increases and concerns for climate change intensifies, the world has begun to shift towards harnessing the power of renewable energy. In Samoa, the most readily available renewable source of energy is hydroenergy energy generated from the power of water. To date, uh, the most cost-effective and the cheapest uh, renewable energy to develop in Samoa is hydroenergy. That is why we're making hydroenergy the highest priority. There are five hydropower stations all located in Upolu, the Afolilo Hydro Dam being the only storage scheme while four run-of-the-river schemes currently operate in Faleolfe'e, Lotosamasoni, Lalomonga and the historic Alawa site currently undergoing refurbishment. With the growing demand for electricity, the EPC together with other government ministries are investigating ways of increasing the amount of hydropower sites. Under the power sector expansion project, um, there was a a hydro data collection component of the whole hydro project and that was funded under BIGAREP. Um, this is to collect all the relevant data for small hydro schemes and that has been completed under this funding by BIGAREP. But the further developments of that will be based on the results of those data collected under the, the BIGAREP fund. At the outset we looked at the potential hydro uh, system in Samoa, we identify 11 schemes and what we did was we narrowed down to five schemes. So at present uh, we have a team working on the feasibility study, studies of these different schemes. So that is what we're going to do. The idea is that we, we can then look at the, <clears throat> the analysis and then prioritize these schemes in terms of uh, development. 
EPC, in collaboration with the Ministry of Natural Resources and Environment, are currently implementing the Hydro Monitoring and Data Collection Program. The data and information from this program will assist the corporation with making informed decisions on the development of potential hydropower schemes. There are a number of uh, promising sites in, in, uh, for hydropower development uh, and we're hoping that uh, with the, the data and also uh, the feasibility studies being carried out we'll be able to um, yeah, map out a, a, a development plan for these, for these hydropower sites. There is a significant potential for small-scale hydropower around many Samoan river systems. Feasibility studies enable key stakeholders to assess the environmental impact for future sites. The best renewable is hydro because you just use the water and then it goes back into the, the system. Uh, but there are, you know, anything has impact and uh, the impacts have been identified and mitigation effort, uh, I mean ac activities have been also identified to apply to address those adversities. One part of Samoa where the environmental effects have improved markedly is Apolima Island, a small island that lies between the main islands of Upolu and Savai'i. The island features high, steep cliffs and has a population of approximately 100 people. Electricity was generated using a diesel generator. However, in 2007, a solar PV system was set up, providing 24-hour electricity to Apolima residents, completely free of greenhouse gases, noise and other air pollution emissions. This is one of the most successful uh, schemes that we have in the sense of reliability. Uh, from the day we cut the ribbon and push the button, uh, that system has been running non-stop, even to date not one power outage. So this is one of the most reliable systems, I would think, in the Pacific, uh, that solar scheme. The, the, the thing about that solar scheme is a bit expensive because it's a storage scheme whereby we utilize batteries. And of course batteries, uh, these devices don't last long. So eventually we have to replace the, these batteries and it will cost more money as well. This remote location of the main Samoan electricity grids is the ideal application of standalone solar power where diesel delivery and operational costs are highest. The solar setup replaced the diesel generator which provided power for only five hours per day and is regularly maintained by the EPC. <laughs> Solar produces a small fraction of the overall electrical power production. However, it proposes a potential complement to hydropower production. Hydropower production being dominant during the wet season and solar power production being dominant during the dry season. What is important is that we develop systems which are very robust. Whatever weather condition that we have, our system still operates. So with the problem with uh, uh, hydro energy is that during the wet season we have a lot of water um, but during the dry season there's hardly any energy coming from the hydro system so we need to have a system that complements and uh, solar energy is precisely that because during the dry season you have a lot of energy coming from your from your sun and during the wet season less energy from the sun so it's a very good uh, combination to have a hydro on one side and solar on the, so that if you have more of one um, then the other one complements the other. So you always have that uh, balance uh, energy injection into the system. In recognizing the need to develop other potential sources of renewable energy, wind monitoring stations have been set up in Upolu and Savai'i. 
The data collected will contribute towards the current feasibility study being conducted. We do have some wind. Unfortunately, we don't have a lot of wind like some places that we know, like Wellington or a few other places. Uh, but we do have some wind. So what is important is that we quantify the amount of the resource and then we develop it accordingly. Uh, we have found that uh, we do have some good spots uh, in Samoa uh, with plenty of wind. So we're looking at, uh, at these locations and we are doing a de uh, detailed monitoring of, of, of these sites. So the objective here is that before the end of this uh, year, year 2011, we should have a, a finalized uh, feasibility study uh, so that we can come up with an investment plan in regards to wind, uh, wind resource. What is very important here is that uh, we don't want to quickly come up with an investment plan and, and start uh, investing it and then find out later that we made a mistake. You know, and these mistakes are very costly. They cost millions and millions of talas. So the last thing we want is to invest um, in a way that we uh, will have regrets. So that is why we're taking a very, we're very cautious. Uh, we have seen around the Pacific and some utilities, well, one of the utilities that I can name, but I'm not going to name, uh, have invested heavily in wind energy and found that uh, the investment is not paying off. Uh, some more, we don't want to follow that. Uh, we want to make sure we calculate our, our efforts uh, well before we, we commit ourselves. An area where investments has been successful is in the development of biofuel and biodiesel made from coconut oil. We've uh, been working on coordinating um, renewable alternative fuel using biofuel and then try out through the, the, the scientific research organization. And they've been quite successful in implementing those programs. Late last year, about November, we launched a bio, the, the launch of our biodiesel plant uh, with a capacity of 200 litres of biodiesel, which can be produced from one batch run. And uh, ever since, we've been producing uh, uh, coconut biodiesel using the locally milled uh, coconut oil from the two uh, oil mill companies in, in, in Samoa. And then we've been trialling the coconut biodiesel in, in two of our fleet, a van and a pickup. Biofuel is being used to generate power at EPC's Tanunga Manono power station. Coconut oil used for power generation is relatively new and therefore presents a set of challenges for both EPC and local producers to overcome. The drawback or the restricting factor with the biofuel is that we can't use 100% of it because, you know, coconut oil uh, at high temperature becomes um, uh, corrosive. It's, a, it's one of these problems that we're facing with. So what we do is we mix this fuel, this uh, product, with our diesel uh, fuel. That's why we're using, at, the, at this point, a ratio of 5 to 95 percent. 5 percent coconut oil and 95 percent um, diesel. EPC hopes to increase the use of coconut oil to 30% in the near future, highlighting the environmental and economical benefits as a great incentive for both EPC and local coconut oil producers. The reason we're driving this is because first we believe that in the long term it's going to be more cost effective. Uh, secondly, it's a cleaner fuel to burn. Uh, thirdly, uh, if we develop this option, it also provides a very attractive benefit where we inject some of the, the funds that usually go overseas to our local community. It's an option that we, once established, we can distance ourselves from, from oil suppliers from overseas. You know, uh, at the moment, there is always a, a risk of having fuel price escalation due to uh, overseas problems or overseas uh, politics or some other reason. 
Biomass is another agricultural resource currently being researched as a potential form of renewable energy. Biomass is wood, you know, it, it's biological uh, uh, storage that's in, 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 in wood product. So the, the, the trees, any trees that's got biomass. But for, for the, this particular technology, there are different types of species or of woods that produce the best results. So part of the, the feasibility study is to look at the different kinds of woods that are wood types that are available in Samoa and decide on which is the best, taking into account all the risks uh, of on the native uh, forest, the risks of, uh, of, of invasiveness, and also the risks of being able to be managed the manageability. I call the local killer from all the killer going up more proke killer. I call the local if I call it come we are falling more more machine. I have found I more proke. I come up for the local for you there. Yeah, yeah, for fun. I feel a lot. A year of a picoa. Or they have a going a more more fun. I know a proke killer for me. This type of technology is common around the Pacific and, uh, I mean, around the Asia area. In fact, it's a kind of technology that can be developed and modeled in a way that an individual establishment can utilize. Like, for instance, a hotel, they can establish their own. It's like a generator. It doesn't run on any fossil fuel. All it runs on is the wood that you chip into chips, and then it's fed into this machine to generate the, the electricity. The project hopes to test the feasibility of generating 250 to 500 kilowatts of power to be fed into the main grid. This targeted output proposes the challenge of sustainability, which the study also hopes to address. The, the challenge there is to make sure that there is a sustainable supply of feedstock for it, a feedstock that can be generated, that can also be made through plantings, rather than exposing our native forest and, and indigenous species to depletion because of them. So that's where all the, the considerations uh, are being looked at uh, from the renewable energy perspective of the ministry. A product without sustainability issues is waste, and a project based in Nu'u has found a clever way to transform waste into usable biogas. Biogas project is one of the component of the Samoa Chinese uh, demonstration uh, project that we have here at NU2. And uh, biogas is mainly produced from the manure or the waste that we uh, get from the, the big farm that we have here. So the, the process is that uh, if you look at this side, we have there the big uh, unit. We have uh, 12 pigs over there. And uh, then they have them, and you are collected in one of the in one of the tank, and then they pass it on to the next tank where they have the special uh, uh, equipment. That is where they, the, the 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 gas is being uh, produced. As part of the project, the biogas produced is used to power the site. We have uh, on this side we have our uh, our training room over here, so we have to the, the electricity to run our protectors, our overheads, and also to, to conduct our training. And also we have uh, our uh, the the oven over here. As if you look into this, we have the oven there. They were using the, for demonstration of uh, cooking, of using the vegetables and uh, the, the materials that we have here at No. The planting of crops to produce the feedstock ensures that the project is sustainable and environmentally friendly. All the, the ingredients and requirements for producing the feeds are planted over here in this uh, project. And that is one of the part of this project so that we can be able to provide locally all the materials that require to, for producing the feed. So we have cassava, we have uh, maize and sweet corn and also sweet potatoes. Those are the different uh, crops that we planted over here. And uh, we use those uh, crops to produce the feed. 
The understanding is that uh, uh, these uh, crops, they are very high in methane and also the, the carbon dioxide, which are highly required uh, sort of gas for producing the, the, the biogas uh, energy sources. This project highlights the successful partnerships forged between Samoa and various government and international organizations. And recently, yet another had been formed with EPC, receiving a grant to install a new solar PV system. To date, uh, we received some good news uh, two weeks ago uh, from the government, that was actually through the government, that uh, one of our applications that was sent out, uh, which was given through the government, uh, had been received and approved by a certain agency in, the, in Fiji. And this agency, uh, the funding comes from, from Japan. So the worth of this uh, system is 4 million U US. And that will uh, allow us to install a system, a minimum system of 400 kilowatts, a grid connector system. So we're very excited about this project. Whether produced from renewable sources such as the coconut, rivers, sun or wind, Samoa's participation in a number of renewable energy projects indicate a willingness to explore and consolidate future opportunities in the field of renewable energy. Most of these projects are still in the resource assessment stage and hopefully from those reports we will be able to develop some of those resources further. The other potential uh, development would be out of these uh, feasibility studies and these reports, we could uh, provide a proposal for a CDM project. Now CDM goes as far as UNFCCC and they will register carbon emissions credits or carbon emission reductions and that will recognize our efforts in terms of um, reducing greenhouse gas emissions. We are looking at how we can achieve carbon neutrality by 2020, which is a target that has been set by, by government uh, for Samoa as a party to the Kyoto Protocol and also the UNFCCC, that we will be able to be carbon neutral by 2020. Uh, well, I'll say in the next 10 years, our serious objective is to see uh, energy from more hydro stations, wind stations, uh, and a lot more energy coming from the biomass and the biofuel. This is where I want to see EPC in the next 10 years. Uh, if we can reach over 50% of our energy coming from a renewable source, you know, we're on the winning uh, road. The ongoing work and collaboration between government ministries and the private sector together with the technical assistance of organizations such as EPC and SROS will ensure that the future development and use of renewable energy in Samoa continues to grow, steering the country towards a sustainable, cleaner and greener future for the next generation.